Well, hello there, and welcome to day 114 of A Film A Day with me, Jordan Woodley. So, you can see, I'm back at the bookshelf, which means that uh, this was a slightly differently watched film, and as you can imagine from the title, I have watched the 1997 Mortal Kombat Annihilation film. Now, the first question you might be tempted to ask is, why would I watch the 97 Mortal Kombat film without watching the 95 um, original that it's a sequel to? Frankly, this continues my mini, and this will only possibly to be two video theme of exercises in disappointment. Because wasn't sure, I, I really quite like the 95 Mortal Kombat film, and I could have watched it, but frankly, um, I wanted something fun to watch, something silly, and as it's a Saturday night watch, I thought, why not watch one of the most bonkers, weirdly judged, um, poorly, poorly made, I, I, I can't really say it other way, poorly made films than Mortal Kombat Annihilation. Um, so this was directed by John R. Linetti, who took over from Paul W.S. Anderson, who directed the first Mortal Kombat film. And John R. Linetti, I was looking through his credits after watching the, the film, and he's a, a, a prominent cinematographer who's been working from the 80s. He, he first started in working in uh, as a camera operator, m climbed his way up, um, you know, in action fare mostly, you know, working on films like Commando and Cobra. Um, cinematography wise, you know, he's, he's well respected um, working on films like like The Mask, uh, Child's Play 3. Uh, the first Mortal Kombat film he was the, the cinematographer on. And then inexplicably, they decided to give him this as his directorial debut. Now, there's nothing to say that a great cinematographer can't make a great director. However, giving him the keys to the sequel of quite a, an intense choreography-based, um, already dense, lore-heavy film, it's a lot to ask for someone's debut feature. And frankly, I, I, I mean... The fact that it's it, it's a film that has a beginning, middle, and end is is probably a credit to him. I mean, he you know he's gone on and, and continued in cinematography and um, and hasn't had a few more um, directing uh, forays. But yeah, I think he sort of realised after this that cinematography is is where he's at um, is is where he sort of shines because I don't know I don't really know how this film could have come about. I mean. The first Mortal Kombat is by no means a masterpiece, but in terms of a video game um, martial arts adaptation, it's competent. It's it's got some sh shaky effects, but for what it is, it achieves its objective. And there are in fact moments of choreography that are just phenomenal, um, particularly the fight between. Shang Tsung and Liu Kang is is just even to this day, I watch that and go oh, that that fight looks so good because they are clearly two martial artists who are being really well choreographed, and it's only a few minutes of a fight, but even still, it just it's it's a practically unbroken shot in the style of a Japanese martial arts film, and it looks really good. There are no fights like that in this. There are a heck of a lot of flips. I couldn't believe, I mean, I've watched this film several times over the years and I could not believe how many flips there were in this film. Um, there are other weird things. I mean, this was sequel had been in the works from the get-go, from the point in which the first one was made, but they've lost most of the cast. The only uh, returning actors are Robin Shu and Talisa Soto, um, and that's fine, they're both competent actors, but frankly I'm like, if you're gonna recast like 80% of your actors and um, bring in 
two dozen new characters. You may as well have recast your entire um, team and then it could have been in its, in its own little separate corner as opposed to constantly being associated with the first, which again, isn't that bad. But of course they do things like they, <laughs> Christopher Lambert, who is a strange performer. He's an actor who you, you watch and you sometimes go, ah, oh, he's, he's doing something odd. He's making choices. I don't know always if I'll go with them, but he's clearly got something in his mind when he's doing it. He played such a interesting Raiden, that such a different take on the character, that when he's replaced by James Remar, who is a very competent actor, James Remar is, is very... It's like, oh, okay, well, yes, fine. Um, Bridget Wilson, who was excellent in the first one, is, is recast um, with... Oh, what was her name? Um, uh, something Soto. Um, and frankly, yeah, it's, it's, it's... Bridget Wilson is a very good actress and, and honestly, she was a fantastic Sonya Blade in that first one. Um, and new Sonya Blade is... Mm, no, not for me. <laughs> like, it doesn't work for me. And of course they bring in Jax. And they bring in... I mean, as someone who knows the Mortal Kombat lore, the fact that they bring in a dozen characters who each get maybe a scene, including Nightwolf, Jade, uh, Sub-Zero 2, Scorpion comes back for a scene, you know, and then, and it, oh, Baraka, and it's, it's just crazy because it's like they went, the first one is fairly contained, you've got a dozen characters, some really interesting fights. In the second one, they basically go, oh, let's put in, I don't know, maybe three times as many characters um, who will probably have a fight each. Um, some might not even get that, and none of it's good. None of the fighting's that good. It doesn't look half as good. Um, it's quite clear that none of the actors are, you know, even someone like Robin Chu, who is a who is a fantastic martial artist, doesn't get the ability to demonstrate it because clearly he's not being um, choreographed to be able to show his abilities. And then there's the effects, and the effects are... To call them PS1 basic is, is almost giving them credit because it is shocking. It is shocking how bad the effects are on this film. Uh, especially as a lot of it relies on transformations into giant dragons and hydras and wolves. And it's just like, oh my goodness, this is, this is abysmal. And I have to say, so the, the centrepiece of what is going on to me, lies in Brian Thompson as Shao Kahn. Because that is an actor who... I was looking, again, someone else whose filmography I was looking at, and I... He, he is a, you know, a, a continuing, primarily TV actor, but he has done film, and he's... The film, the things that I've seen, I, I go, oh yeah, he was good in that and that. In this, it's, it's, it's another world. It, it almost... He looks right for the part. It just... It almost feels like they cast him for the look. And then for some reason, I don't know whether it's him or the director said, oh, he's not going to wear the helmet, the, the famous Shao Kahn helmet for most of the film. And I don't know if that's the point when he decided to ham up to like 112, because honestly, I've never seen an actor chew scenery and overact more than in this film. And I just, it's, it's something else. It honestly, it's, it's, incomprehensible but it's wonderful in that and that's the thing it's, it's wonderful because it's so over the top and that's almost exemplary of this film where it's so ridiculous and so choices are made where you just can't quite get your head around them but because they're so ludicrous it, it's 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 in the room level of like I don't know why you do this, but now that you've done it, I'm, I'm intrigued and I kind of want to see that again. Um, so, yeah, it's definitely in the in the pantheon of so good it's bad because it is without doubt terrible. But I have had I've watched, like I say, this film half dozen times and I've never not had fun with it because it's so ludicrous. 
And hey, it's, I'm doing better seeing this now than I'm currently seeing the new Mortal Kombat, which has still not been released. No news on when that's happening. I'm gonna, I'm not gonna um, harp on about it because it could be months before we see it in the UK. But I can't pretend I'm not a little disappointed. Um, but yeah, crazy. Honestly, crazy, crazy film. Um, so. Thank you for joining me. If you like the video, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and please go through the back catalogue of videos. Um, please follow me on Twitter at Jordan underscore Woodley, where I'm always tweeting about movies and um, movie news, and of course, links to videos as they go up. Thank you for joining me. Take care.